Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to build some of these little brackets for a customer. So the customer designed this bracket and they actually get attached to a uh, floor joist um, up underneath. So they bolt it up, lag screw up, and then a threaded rod uses coming down to support a shelving unit. Um, and he needs 10 of these things. So we're going to go ahead and just get these made out of 6061. Um, that I've got here and we'll get it over in the Johnson bandsaw and get them cut off uh, a little bit over length so we can mill them on each side end, get them true, and then we'll mill the slots and drill the holes. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is get our mill set up and just setting up a stop because we're going to actually trim the edge here and I made this little stop years ago it just clamps to the vice jaw. Now this has the groove for the Kurt stop that clamps in there but the stop I have is just wore out isn't performing well anymore it slides on me so I quit using it um, and I've been looking for another one a new one that's in good shape but I have not gotten there yet um, and then here's another little trick bend some some uh, banding steel banding and use that for your parallel keeper That's it, in the vise. So here's the cutter we're going to use on this job to true up that end. And I've used this on a lot of my aluminum block jobs where I have to square up the ends. Works really well. And we're actually going to run this at a pretty decent speed um, just because it's aluminum. We don't need to go too slow. And we'll go ahead and set her up and start cutting.
So I got the first end done. We'll go ahead and flip them around to our stop. Clamp it in. And we're going to take another, another uh, 10 thou just to see where we are. And if you noticed, I'm always climb milling these. measure it and see where I'm at right here. Got my caliper over there. And looks like I can take another fourteen thousandths. So we'll turn it into Another 14 and take another cut. Well, that cleaned up nicely. right where I want to be. So I'll go ahead and I'll deburr this. Um, and hit it with a fi flat file quick and then deburr it with this thing. And it's just simple as that. Cleans up nicely. And I'll get the rest of these done and then we'll flip around and set up to mill the slots. Actually, I think we'll do the holes first and then we'll do the slots. <laughs> Next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to just lay this right down in the bottom of my vise um, just to give it a little more stability like that. And then I'll take my wobble edge finder and find the edge of my part because I already know how wide my part is. It's four inches exactly and they're all the same because we went off the stop over here and milled them all. So we'll go ahead and find our edge here you bring it in until it stops spinning or wobbling and just go a little further until it offsets itself and then I like to back it off and just kind of watch my readout and see because sometimes you go too far and you take, you wind up going a couple thousand extra, which I don't like. It looks like I'm good right there. We'll zero my readout, bring it up, move it over the width, half the width of my my edge finder, which is a half inch, so 250 thou. And now I'm centered on the edge of my part. So now the holes in there are 7 16 so we're going to go ahead and use a 7 16 drill. Um, and actually what I'm going to do here is use a screw machine drill. They're a lot shorter, they don't wobble as much, 
I just, I like screw machine drills for a lot of things. So right, that's what we're going to use here. Tighten her down. And actually when you're indicating your part, you should indicate your back jaw as well. I know my back jaw is still indicated in because I recently did it. And next we're going to go ahead and just kind of, we're going to find out where center is on these. Actually, I'm just going to measure hole to end first. 400, 400. Okay, so it should be good. And then I just take my that measurement there plus half of the inside. And I'll go add that up and we'll bring it in that much on this one and then we'll drill this one, flip it around, drill the other end, and then we'll flip it over and drill the center hole. Now we flip our part over, stick it in, and then we'll move our table over to halfway. Which is right. So now that all of our holes are drilled, we got to mill these slots in here. And just looking at it, it looks to me like it's a, a half inch end mill, quarter inch radius. And throwing the radius gauge up in there, it's dead on. So we'll go ahead and just throw a half inch end mill up in the mill. I'll calculate out what I need to open that up. And we'll go ahead and mill those. Now I've been using this half inch end mill for, for quite a while on aluminum. And it's a two flute coated and it's a little war but um, this thing cuts beautifully and with aluminum always remember climb milling is best especially if I'm milling a pocket like this that I'm going the full depth on so just remember climb milling is best and it works extremely well so I got it all figured out where my start my stop everything is and we'll go ahead and and uh, start cutting and like I said, climb milling is always best in aluminum. It just seems to peel the material out a little better. Lock that. And let's we'll go ahead and make our cut. And I can probably speed up my end mill a little bit. I might just do that yet. We'll see how this one looks. finished out okay um, but definitely could have been a little better so we're gonna go ahead and speed up we already sped up the spindle we'll go ahead and try another one end um, and it should just come out nice and clean
I didn't like the finish I had on that first one. I went and I'm, I actually sped up my uh, spindle speed here. And we'll go ahead and cut the next one and see what we got. Much better. Looks just like the original. So there it is, all done. Just a little bit of deburring left to do, and these parts are ready to go to the customer. Well, I'm gonna get these deburred up and back to the customer. Um, got them done pretty quickly, they were a pretty easy part. Um, most of you guys, you have a mill and a lathe at home in your garage. You would do these yourself. But if you have to take stuff to a machine shop, please, 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 please do not call every single day asking if your parts are done. Um, this particular customer, I gave him a two to three week lead time. I knew it would take him about a week to get material in. He dropped this off on a Friday. I ordered material on a Friday. Saturday morning he calls and asks if his parts are done. Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday, I finally sent in the tracking info after he called me, and Thursday the material came. Now, because he's been so annoying, I just knock him out and get him done, but I came very close to telling him, come pick up your part, I'm not doing it because you're wasting my time. You're bothering me constantly, just don't do that. I've got other jobs that do take priority, something small like this is not a rush for me um, as say one of my big customers their whole facility is shut down and they need a part in an emergency that is a priority a little job like this is not a priority so please don't do that you will annoy the shop and they will tell you to come pick up your part and they won't do it so just just word to the wise so with that until next time get out in your shop and get it done right the first time